an old friend of mine, Amy Nolan. It's Rick Martin. Hello. It is very cold. What? The expression on your face. Your whole mood. You were playing that trumpet, you were exhausted. Sure of yourself. Now you might have gotten rather startling transitioning to I'd rather call you Richard than Rick, you don't mind. Right. People try to find security in a lot of strange ways. You seem to have solved your problems. At least while you're playing that trumpet. Well, I understand the word you're saying, but I love the sound of your voice. Got a wonderful rough spot. I should have warned you about Amy. She always talks like a medic of and likes to analyze everything. She's studying to be a doctor and a psychiatrist. Oh, well, how do I stack up? I am just a purely professional. When I meet someone who has a great talent, I want to know him right away. You don't mind, do you? No, no, no. Go on. Tell me about jazz. You think it's purely African? I don't know. I don't know what she's thinking about it. I just like to play it. If you listen to it or not. I didn't come here to listen to it. I came to study the people and watch their faces. They're interesting. There's something about jazz that releases inhibitions. It's a sort of cheap, mass-produced narcotic. I gather you don't like jazz. Not particularly. Oh, I know it's supposed to be our native art. Cotton fields, levees, old New Orleans, and blues in the night. Excuse me, please. Would you do a number, please, Joe? I don't like to ask, but... Uh... All right, Louis. If you're singing, they never let you just talk. Excuse me. Sure, knock them dead. Are they owing the money? Well, put him on. I'll talk to him. What do you mean he won't talk to me? No, oh, I don't want to talk to his lawyer. I won't. Oh, all right. I'll... If I think of anything, I'll call you back. What's the matter? This month, Bantam should go to the press tonight. That was Herb. Randall of the Randall Press flatly refuses to publish another copy until we pay him the money we owe him. What do we owe him? About $7,000. How much has the Bantam got in the bank? Well, the bank didn't even trouble to send us a statement last month. Figure it out for yourself. Why don't you just send Randall a check? Because I can't go to jail yet, dear. I have a two years lease on my apartment. Oh, well. There goes the Bantam. Oh, and it was such a beautiful magazine. Even if nobody did read it. Must be lots of fun publishing a magazine. Oh, yes, you can see. We're all practically in hysterics. What's the annual loss of the Bantam Fisk? Oh, about 20000 on a good year. 20,000, that's not much. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Now, if we work really hard, I'm perfectly certain we could lose twice that amount. Why, well, I might even double my salary and you should see me on an expense well, account. beginning to sound like I might be interested. Are you serious, Mr... What's his name? Collier. Collier? I think so. Wait a minute. If you're coming in on this just on a rich man's whim... This is not a rich man's whim. If the world's going to war, the least I can do is go to work. What do you know about the Bantam? Do you know what it stands for? What I know about the Bantam is my father doesn't like it. That's good enough for me. What a paper we could put out with some money. A bigger staff, a better makeup. We could put on a campaign, get more subscribers. We could even afford to hire you, Christy. Well, that would have to be part of the deal. Miss Sage would have to go to work for us. It's a deal. Now, for the first step, have you got $7,000 in cash on you? I, I left my money in my other suit. Then write a check to the Randall Press. Pen and ink? Ink? Use my blood. Well, how did you get up here? Have you got a woman in this apartment? Who wants to know? Who has a better right? Now, see here, I'm in a very bad humor. You get downstairs where you got up. How can you shout at me after all you promised last night? I'm not shouting. I didn't promise anything. Where is she? Say, by what right do you come crashing into the... So it's you. Hello. Say, what is this? That's what I'm asking. Mr. Poe was just telling me the plot of a play. So that's how you happen to be on the floor. Come on, get up. That isn't where I left you. What is this, a frame up? Tony, darling, control yourself. Don't Tony, darling, me. Now you come on. Get up out of there. And you go home immediately. I'll go home and you hear what I've got to say. Well, say it and get it over with. Take him up here to sign a contract to do a play. Yes. What's she going to sign it with? Champagne? Parkour, call the manager. Oh, you needn't get any manager. I thought I was in love with you, but I see my mistake now. I only went out with you in the first place to spite Linda. Yes, you better hide your face, you double-dealing, double-crossing... Darling, I didn't know what I was doing. My own roommate, and you preach ideals. Oh, you and your grandfather. Look, I've had enough of this nonsense. She preaches ideals so she can chisel when my back is turned. Well, you can take your old red fox cape. I'll never borrow another thing again from you as long as I live. And don't try to borrow anything from me. Oh, please don't start that again. I hope you two snakes will be very happy together. You too, you reptile. Never mind.
But it's so funny. Everything. But it isn't funny at all. What do you suppose she thinks? Exactly what I want her to think. Why? Why? Well, for several reasons. In the first place, I like her. She won't like you very much oh, after this. Oh, she'll see the light in time. You mean you jeopardize your own reputation? Aren't you a kind of a girl, Scout? Just a girl who uses her brain. Anyhow, I wanted to show you that I could act. You are a faker. Oh, we're both fakers. Isn't faking the essence of acting? Well, it may apply to actors, but it does not apply to me. You, you're a bigger faker than I am. That's liable. Not if I can prove it. Now, this young man's your son, isn't he? Please keep my and family he is out of this. Son. He must be a lot older than you are. Because that photograph has been used to advertise a certain military academy for a great number of years. How do you know? Because my brother went to that academy. And this lady whom you pretend is your wife, she's done a lot of posing for the face founder ads, I believe. My friend, you have just broken up a very, very convenient marriage. I think that we understand each other. I'm alone in this big house with the willies. Would you like a drink? No, thanks. Well, that's right, I forgot. Sit down, Joe. What was this business you wanted to talk to me about? Look, Joe. I don't know anything about the company. I've tried to understand, and the lawyers have explained things to me. Only the more they talk, the less I know. Joe, I can't run a trucking business by myself. I've got to have someone to help me. Does that mean me? Yes. Ed had such confidence in you. He said you had great ideas. And I know he'd want you to be my partner. Partner? Yes, part. 50-50. I've got the papers all drawn up and all you have to do is... What's wrong? Do you want to own half of a big trucking business? With anyone else, I think it was a swell deal. But you? I don't know. Why not, Joe? It's good for me because if I don't get someone to help me, I'll end up losing the business. And it's good for you because you'll never get a chance like this again. No interference? None, I promise you, Joe. I don't know anything about trucks. How could I interfere? I wasn't talking about trucks. Oh, you've got to help me, Joe. I haven't anyone else in the world to turn to. Well, what's it going to be? It's going to be like you say. You can count me in. Oh, I'm so glad, Joe. Neither of us will regret it. Now, how about that drink to celebrate? Just this once. Okay, yeah. Uh, I'll take a shot. It's going to work out fine, Joe. I know it will. And it's what Ed would have wanted. Hey, thanks, Doris is Wade. Thanks. There will be wailing and gnashing of feet when these go out. Oh, Abby, I know this isn't in your line, but as long as you insisted on the job, will you stop calling them cows in the stockyard? They're steers. Steers. Well, I don't see any difference. A rise is expected mm -hmm. this season in the price of longhorn cows. Never mind. I'll correct this copy myself. Longhorn cows. Well, I must be running along. By the way. May I let you into a little secret? Why? You've got a smudge of ink on your nose. Bye. Goodbye, Joe. Goodbye. <laughs> With Abby. <laughs> Is this showing proper respect for the law? I never saw the law fall on his face before. Fall on my face. You know, there's an old saying in the British Army. The law must always save its face in front of the natives. And what if the natives object to its face? Just put them across our knee and spank them soundly. You're not suggesting that I'm a native? No. The only real native of Kansas is the buffalo. He's got a very hard head, a very uncertain temper, and a very lonely future. Apart from that, there's hardly any comparison between them. Goodbye, Joe. Goodbye, Wade. Goodbye. I like that fella. <laughs> in the There's a lot of Julie's head in one afternoon. May take a little time. Oh. Yeah, oh yes. Uh, Julie's very, very uh, stubborn and, of course, emotional. Yeah. Julie is very emotional. Mm, and difficult. Uh -huh. Any woman who's emotional is always difficult. Don't you always find it that way? Oh, very much that way. Uh, but still, just the same. I was, uh, what was I saying? You said Julie was emotional. Oh, yes, that's right. She, uh, yeah, that's right. She is. And I, well, I, I left her. And there you are. And that's everything that happened. Precisely. Well, it was nice to get such a detailed description, sort of blow-by-blow blow account. Now, Anne, just a second. You wouldn't believe me if I told you that absolutely nothing went on between Julie and me, would you? No. You'd say I was lying, wouldn't you? I would, and you are. Ah. Well, I guess I'll go back to bed, then. An excellent decision. There's no use trying to talk to you in one of your jealous tantrums.
You have the gall to stand there and call me jealous? Not only the gall, the accuracy. What makes you think I'm interested? What's it to me if you want to live one of your cheap novels? Cheap? Listen, I can put up with a jealous woman, but I can't stand a critic. I can't stand the sight of you. Get out of this Let room. Let me tell you for your own information, I'm paying for this room. My name is on the register, and it'll take more than that to find a shriek of yours to put me out of here. All right, then I'll get out. All right. Come in. Well, Mr. Bixby? Yes. My car. How do you do, Mr. Farrington? Uh, Mr. Bixby, may I see you alone for a few minutes? Miss Rogers is my secretary. Well, then I may speak freely? And quickly. I shall not mince words. <clears throat> Mr. Bixby, I share a suite of offices with Mr. Arthur Westlake. You may be interested to know that Mr. Westlake is there at this moment, drawing up the papers for the divorce suit of Wilson versus Wilson. Uh, that is Harvey versus Julie. Well, I'm not interested. Now, if you'll excuse us, we're very busy. I'll be going in a moment. There's just one other point. Mr. Wilson is naming you as correspondent. <laughs> Mr. Bixby is interested. Oh, that's ridiculous. That's fantastically absurd. Let Mr. Farrington say what he's come to say, Mr. Bixby. It might be important. Uh, here's the crux of the matter. I went to law school with Mr. Westlake, and I believe it is in no way derogatory to Arthur to mention that I received much the better marks. Also, this is his first case. I've had uh, uh, several. In addition, I am six months older than Arthur. You'll be needing a lawyer, Mr. Bixby. May I suggest that it will be distinctly to your advantage to retain me? Why should I need a lawyer? To a man in the public eye, being named in a divorce suit isn't the most... Uh, you'll need an experienced hand to protect you, Mr. Bixby. Uh, I can take care of myself. You'll pardon me, but the very fact that you're named as a correspondent is proof that perhaps you aren't as capable of taking care of yourself as you might imagine. Hello, Rick. Hi. What'll it be, Mac? Oh, glass of milk, please. It's been a long time. Yeah. I've been busy. Sure. Listen, I didn't sign a contract with Galbus. Of course not. Man's got to live his own life. He's got to live it his way. And you got to take the breaks the way they come. That's right. Yeah. I know what you think. All right, we've been friends. You did a lot for me. I try to pay you back, but... Well, if you're through, you're through. There's nothing I can do about it. I can't hold you up forever. I know. The trumpet man, he plays his little tune, and then he's done. I didn't come here to ask for anything. But people talk. I heard you had the misery. And I thought maybe I could help you some way. I don't need any help. What am I, a kid that can't wipe his nose for himself? Why does everybody have to stick his two cents worth into my life? Telling me what to do, how to do it, and how to live. I'm sick and tired of it. You're right. People get old, they see things wrong, mostly. A man's got to live his own life, just like you said. I'd have felt the same way about it when I was your age. Everything's going to turn out all right. Don't let anybody worry. Just... take care of yourself. In 1944, five members of the OSS, the Military Espionage Unit, were ordered behind the German lines for the purpose of delivering $250,000 in gold to the French underground. The five men were, of course, your husband Charles, the three men who showed up at his funeral yesterday, and Carson Dial. Oh. Instead of delivering the gold, they stole it. How? By burying it, then reporting that the Germans had captured it. All they had to do was come back after the war, dig it up, split it five ways. Quarter of a million dollars with no questions asked. Yeah, have a cigarette, please. I can't stand those things. It's like drinking coffee through a veil. Everything went smoothly enough until after the gold was buried. Then before they could get out, they were ambushed by a German patrol. A machine gun separated Scobie from his right hand. Caught Carson Dial full in the stomach. What's wrong with that one? Nothing, I guess. What happened then? Have you any idea what these things cost? Or Please go on, Mr. Bartholomew. What happened then? Carson Dial was dead, but Scobie was able to travel. 
Ça, c'est au petit pour qui Pour moi. 